That was GDF by Flowrider, which was actually a really good tune. Thanks, Owen, for that. Um, you didn't mess it up. Good job. Good job, man. Good job. We'll buy you a cookie later. There we go. Um, Don't hold me to that, Owen, please. I welcome back to Wheels and the Bees. I'm your host, Mark McNally, and joined here by mathematician Dano. And Colin, who's not a mathematician. Not at the moment, anyway. You never know. <laughs> you never know. You change, you know, change your careers, you know. Uh, we're we're going to talk about something that's a bit old. We're going to talk about the Hobbit 3. The Battle of the Five Armies. Oh. Are we a bit late? I don't care. No, no we're not late at all. Okay. It's still showing in cinemas. It's some still places, showing in right? cinemas. So we can it, talk about it. I mean, <laughs> it's still going to make a lot more money, so might as well just throw our opinions in. Dollar, dollar bill, y'all. So, Colin, I'm going to start with you, because you, you, you've seen it three times now. Yes, I have three times. Yeah, not purposely. Just well, I mean, I didn't just happen to wake up in the cinema, but <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that I would have gone to see it three times because it was such an amazing film. Um, I mean, the first time I saw it, I saw it on the day that it was released, and I was all excited for it. I was like, "Yeah, okay, last one, fin- final step of the journey." You know, all that marketing was going to my head, and. <laughs> I don't know, I just wasn't 100% impressed. Well, less than 100 It was just not what I expected it to be. I mean, even the first two Hobbit films were very different, obviously, to the original trilogy. But there was just something about the last one that there was just so much CGI battles that it took away from the characters. All the characters were spread out. There were so many characters that characters didn't get developed enough. And it just didn't seem to focus on, I guess, what you get so used to in, in the other films where it kind of looks into the characters and that's why you're invested because you know each of the characters really well. But at this it was like they lined up all the characters and they were like, look, we have Martin Freeman, we have we have Ian McKellen, we have all these people. But we're not going to really show you. Good, good, re- given really good performances. Yeah, I mean, th- there, was, there wasn't a bad perf- performance. I'm trying to think of, an, of a genuinely bad performance in it. Oh, I didn't like... Um, I'm not sure what the, what what this man's name is. is this, who is played it, Bard? Is this? A, oh, I, I was thinking. Oh, yes. I was thinking more of Ryan Gage, who played Alfred. You know the guy with the unibrow. Yes. The most out of place character I've ever seen in a film. It was a very very strange choice. I mean, I feel like he played it well. Yeah, he played the part well. The part was What was he doing there? there? We didn't care for him. This character who, like was a like very minor role in the second one became this much larger role in the third and he had more screen time I'd say than a good majority of the dwarves who yeah. this whole film should have been about bad, realistically yeah. who is this fellow in relation to the story um he's Alfred he's um the sidekick you saw the second one yeah I saw the second do you know yeah. uh, Stephen Fry's character yes uh, Al- Alfred is, is like his henchman why does he's, he matter he doesn't but he has this massive role in the third, and you're just like, why is he here? Like, I, I've read the Hobbit why book. Why did they bother? I've read the Hobbit book, and there's a lot of detail, and all the dwarves are developed, and Bilbo's developed, and all of that. But I can't remember him at all. No, he's one of those inclusions that you just wish wasn't there. And talking about the 13 dwarves, which are Thorn, Balin, Keely, Feely, da- Dory, Nori, Ori, Owen, Golan, Biffer, Bofer, Boffer, Dwalin. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> About four of them have characteristics. Probably, yeah. The rest of them are kind of memorable. Like um, I was so disappointed. You you literally have nine hours of film, and they couldn't flesh out the dwarves. They had some. I mean, I, f- I felt in the first two at least they had some. Each of them had, you know, at least maybe the first six you got to see in good detail, and they kind of did stuff with the other ones. But this one, it was just like. It's all about Thorin, really. That was that was it. No, and Keely. Keely was yeah, but that Keely was literally a bit of a just there. for the well, yeah. for this for this. the yeah for the for the love interest. Yes, there we go. The romance, which um, I don't think really anyone cared about. Oh, f- I, I, I was one of those people who was kind of like, oh, ew, uh, <laughs> ew. <laughs> what is this romance? <laughs> uh, I want more fighting. I want more like Frodo and Sam romance <laughs> instead of this romance. <laughs> Uh, I will say when I went to see it the second time I enjoyed it more than the first time because I was more prepared for for what it was you have to be kind of open to that more childish 
humor and kind of just general kind of puns mm. as opposed to the epicness of the original ones which you, I guess I should have realized after seeing the first two but I did watch The Fellowship before going to see the final mm, one right. so that probably kind of tainted my view a bit right um I think the send-offs of some of the characters, like when you know you saw Return of the King, every character got its own send-off, and the, and the, the ending went on for like forty minutes, and it it's good send-off. Like the best, some of the best send-offs you'll ever see in a film, even though it required a lot of a big ending. Yeah, it uh, did. Was the it? send-offs in this one are just horrendous. Like the last time you see Kate Blanchett or Christopher Lee as their characters, they're just kind of like they're just there, and then they're gone, and you never see them again. Like the, some of the send-offs were, I'd say if rubbish. you watch the whole thing maybe uh, in a row, like starting off at the first Hobbit and going through it, it might make more sense. Maybe, probably not, but maybe you definitely. I mean, for the I don't want to spoil too much for people who haven't seen it, but for the opening sequence of the third Hobbit, you would kind of have wanted to watch the second one pretty close to it because it jumps you right into yeah. storyline. Yeah, no, there was a scene in the, like pretty much in the first. 30 minutes 40 minutes in which I, um, my dad was sitting next to me and he's just like what in the place is, is going on and I'm like we went to see the one last year and he goes like yeah but I don't remember this he wasn't talking about the dragon the dragon scene is amazing I thought it was very well done right? Uh, score and everything was really better than Cumberbatch giving it all for a few minutes um, but there was a scene afterwards with Gandalf like you know the second one where he's all trapped yeah yeah yeah, Even trapped, I couldn't really figure out what was going on at that point. He's trapped in the lair, the necromancer's lair or something else, yeah. is it? Or? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But what happens next in the in the third film, it just it kind of I was really un- couldn't really understand what was going on. But uh Yeah, I mean there were some some problems there. The story was a bit clunky in that parts of it that were short felt like they should have been longer. Bits that were long felt like they should have been shorter. Yeah, they probably shouldn't have focused much on the necromancer thing because that didn't yeah. really come into the books. I honestly don't remember. Oh no, he's he's not the focus of the film. Whatsoever. I thought, yeah, I thought, and no, some of that stuff was the best bits of. I mean, the the bits with with Gandalf and and um, Kate Blanchett yeah. were some of the best moments in the whole film. I thought they were really yeah. kind and, of intense, and they only moments. lasted a f- yeah. few minutes. But they were they were really good, and they didn't focus. Maybe that's why they were good because they didn't focus on them too much. They gave them yeah. enough time to show you what it was, and then they moved back to the main storyline. Yeah. Yeah, and again, this is where I'm ripping on the character of Alfred, but there's a bit early on in the film where he's, um, where everyone's kind of ganging up on him because he's an ass. Yeah. And that scene goes on for like 10 minutes. And you're like, there's a character we don't care about. Wow. It's not relevant to the rest of the plot. Can this scene just end? Like, do you know when they're in the There's time to the tree already. Yeah, just kidding. <laughs> um, and this is, this is a personal thing, but I wanted non CGI orcs. Yeah, like the first films, they were non-C... Yeah, non, they were non-CGI. definitely non-CGI. But every single orc in this was just CGI, oh, CGI, CGI. Point. And you're really just... I just want some prosthetic makeup. Please. That, that's so what made the yeah. first battle scenes, like Helm's Deep and the first ones. That looked class because they were, they were all real. They were also ugly looking. Every, every piece that, of that armour was made specifically for them. Mm. Every single piece. There was no CGI at all. Craftsmanship. Yeah, like proper metalsmith and the whole crack. That looked class. It really did set the whole thing. You know, I was watching some of the behind the scenes of the of the most of the five armies, and it looked as if they actually had some of it. Was that you know it was it wasn't it was practical you know practical effects they were actually dressed up with all the prosthetics on, from the look of the behind the scenes. But when you go see the film, you don't feel. I can't think of one orc that I saw that didn't look CGI. So I'm just trying to figure out: did they just replace everything? Because there's definitely moments like they have fight scenes. That, that are going on during the battle that you can see in the behind the scenes and they have you know they have whatever like 20 different guys all in their orc armor yeah. running towards the other people and they're you know they're all fully in the prosthetics and everything so I don't know where that went because it genuinely looked all CGI yeah so it was I, like, I, I they, just, they put all this effort in bit. yeah they put all this effort in for the makeup and just kind of threw it out and then put CGI in I was so disappointed. Bad joke. And the, the, uh, the, the main orc, what do you call him? Uh, like the big tall fellow with the scar. Azog. Azog. He uh, should have been real. He should have got someone really tall. In. Maybe yeah. got like uh, Big Kali or what do you call him? A wrestler. Like he's six foot five or something like that and he's built like a brick. Uh, they should have got him in to do it because mm. he's big hulking and he looks intimidating. Mm. 
I should have got him in or maybe someone like Batista because Batista can actually act oh, as we've seen yeah, in yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy got him in to do Dwayne it. The Rock Johnson or The Rock <laughs> of course uh, also uh, on the last point Billy Connolly turns up in the film if you don't know that already why? don't don't say well, anymore but no, 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 he does show up Billy Connolly turns up I mean it's been told everyone knows that but um, clearly everyone doesn't know this <laughs> but he turns up and why is his character CGI? Colin only understands what I'm saying, but I, I, it doesn't really I, I'm saying I, I'm I, yeah, I've, why, I've read, I read into face? it, and I couldn't, I couldn't. No one seems to be able to figure out. It was, you know, people were saying, oh, maybe it's because he couldn't make it to the set. But then they were like, why would you hire an actor who can't show up? He's yeah. not doing much of the. And he's not doing time. much of the video. Like, what is he doing? He's like, ah, I can't make it to the set, and he's just kind of sitting at home smoking a cigar, <laughs> listening to the radio, being all angry. <laughs> Classic and Billy. Scottish, classic Billy, <laughs> because he does have you know he's one of the characters who kind of has a good effect in the time that he's there. He's not there for a really long period of time, but he when he comes in, you're like, whoa, this is cool. I like this new character. Yeah, I can get down with this. Yeah, but he's um... but then you you see his face and you're like, but uh, but maybe maybe this is something to do with the whole the new shooting everything in digital. Maybe it's giving everything a different look. So some of this mm-hmm. stuff is actually real, and we're just not. You yeah, know, we're seeing it, as, see it as, yeah. as kind of a digital look, which would kind of look CGI. I don't know. Uh, but like those are the sort of the main problems I've had with it. Uh, and, okay, pro, the, the pros now. Good opening. The, the action scenes, although kind of you've seen them before, they were good. They were very well put together. And I can't fault a single performance except for Alfred. There was the cast was gen like was generally good, and that's the disappointing thing because it was strong but so spread out so you had all these strong actors not getting enough screen time and being able to influence you in the way that they usually would in some other some other uh, performance so that was that was something that really disappointed me was you just didn't get to see as in depth into the characters which you would think you would given the amount of time that you've spent you know eight hours nine hours of film hmm. you think they could develop a lot of these guys more but I guess it's how it turned out. Yeah, I feel like I feel like Peter Jackson was just kind of resting on his merits. Yeah, more than likely, he was just kind of he was there for the money, maybe. Well, I know I think he, he, he I think he genuinely like loves. He, he does love it, like, but still, three films. Ah, uh, but there's money involved there. No? <laughs> it's two good ones. And he, he said he'd like to make more. Don't please, please oh, don't make any more, please, please. Peter, just, you're rich enough already. Please don't make any just more. Just finish. Well, there's please. no more books, really. Don't mess it. Actually, there's loads. There's like twelve. Right. So, 2060. If we're both still here, we'll probably still be talking about <laughs> yeah. Jackson films. I will say you should go see it anyway. I mean, just to, just to finish off the whole. Yeah, it's sort of like thing. Uh, like hopefully you'll, there won't be another one. So this is the final one. So you should see it for that respect. Mm. And there is bits in it that that are good. I mean, yeah. I mean, there it has moments. The the Necromancer stuff is is pretty good, and mm. there you know it's it's good to see. Christopher Lee. Back and, yeah, Christopher Lee Christopher Lee's in like 95 and then he just turns up and just kicks everyone oh there, so there is there is good moments go see it. I mean as a whole thing it is in in my mind flawed a bit a bit a, a bit a, just uh, just a bit uh, but you know and especially if, if you can see it in now uh, do you want to be spending this much money but if you can see it in the high frame rate 3D and in the 2D, just to compare them, I found that really interesting because uh, I'd seen I saw the, the high frame rate after the 2D version, and it threw me. I felt like everything was moving so quickly, and it mm. took me like 15, 20 minutes to get into the film. And even then, I found everything to be too smooth, and all the colors were a bit strange. So you know, and there's varying views. Some people really like the new high frame rate because everything looks so smooth and crisp, and some people don't because you lose that motion blur. So I think it's a good one to showcase this new technology because Peter Jackson has used it really well and it's it's something that he you know that he's done I think well is mm. you know use the new kind of technology digital film and high frame rate so he's exploring it well and it's, it's a good film to watch for that yeah um, so we're going to finish off a few minutes left we're going to talk about Arnold Schwarzenegger of course